so much. Welcome everyone. So we'll go for the Ganesh Vandana first. I need OTP. <laughs> Hi Manish. Hi Manish. How are you? Hello. Hello. Hi Manish, how are you? Manish, you have you you need to unmute yourself. No, well, Chidmata, Chidmata, so we're going to start the session now. Yeah. So, here we go. Well, good evening, everyone. I think I'm audible to all. Yeah. Yes, you are audible. Well audible. Thank you so much. So uh, thanks a lot, everyone, our respected seniors, our dignitaries, the members of uh, Executive Committee of Indian Orthopedic Rheumatology Association and Indian Stem Cell Study Group for helping us in designing this program. Well, definitely has been very well advocated by uh, Dr. Uh, Anup also that definitely, yes, orthobalgics would be the next thing or other regenerative medical science would be the next thing in coming decade of time. And that is true because that is the need of the hour. So, well, before moving to the basics of stem cell, let us have a few important things which I want to say. Definitely, yes, the future of the medicine and surgery is something new. Something new means regenerative part of the medical science as well as something more related to the uh, intelligence, the, you know, the smart work. Well, it has been estimated that by 2050, the memory chip would be implanted in the with the doctors. It is a silicon chip mimicking the human brain cell, and it will require a six months of practical residency training to get accustomed to what the things are in the latest advances. By 2060, yes, artificial intelligence will reach to such a level that uh, robots would be going to replace the artificial intelligence. Silicon chips mimicking the human brain cell would be the next thing that an intelligent machine. But I always say that artificial intelligence cannot replace the emotional intelligence. Whatsoever may be the things, but the emotional intelligence which is there with the doctors while treating, while taking the history, while deciding the treatment modalities and blah, blah, all the things would not going to change. It will be there and that will be the trademark for the doctors also for the coming decades of time. Yes, definitely we have moved from a very ape-like situation to a situation of a computer keyboard and now again moving back to small, small cells which will be taking help 
in all those challenging medical conditions which require the use of uh, regenerative orthopedics. Well, our body tissue, maybe the bone, joints, tissue, they have a stem cells that help continuously maintaining, repairing the regenerative tissue over the lifetime that is going on. Suppose we are having our, any problem, any injury. So that microscopic level, it healed by the help of stem cells. Stem cells are separate and a different entity as compared to PRP is concerned. PRP, we all are using for a very long time. It is a rich material of the cocktail. It is a cocktail juice secreted by the platelets. So it is not a stem cell. It is not having the cells. So it is not a stem cell. So practically, we should be able to know that PRP is not a stem cell. It is a cocktail of the growth factor, which will be used in the same direction of the regeneration, which is possible. So whenever we give a, P a PRP or platelet, it is a cocktail of the growth factor, as can be seen here, IGF, VEGF, EGF, which do the required job. Maybe it is a delayed union to get rid of it, or maybe it's an inflammation to get rid of it. Whatever it may be like, it uses it. So right terminology for the stem cell is progenitors. It's a misnomer used since decades, stem cell. It's actually progenitor cells which are the master cells capable of dividing and are unspecialized cells. So it is a blank check, you know, we can offer a blank check to anybody to sign it and use it in whichever way they want. So similarly, these stem cells are the blank cells. They are the blank check, which are the, have a specialized task to do it. Progenitor cells, these cells divide into a specialized cell whenever it is required. A specialized cell, maybe RBC, maybe neutrophil. There are three types of uh, lineage, rather, you can say stem cells, hematopoietic cells, which have been used legally since decades, decades all over the world. Mesenchymal stem cells, which can differentiate to muscles, bone, cartilage, the tissue, name it, and they can do it. And the embryonic stem cell, which are the gray area, which are, we are not supposed mm -hmm. to be to use it gradually. We all know that Shinaya Yamagaraka from Japan in way back in 2000, have developed ipsilateral, uh, sorry, induced pluripotent stem cells. So before moving ahead, one should know what are this terminology, induced pluripotent stem cells. So any uh, tissue from the skin or the blood, they can be utilized to produce a stem cell, embryonic stem cell like, because we can't use embryonic stem cell as such for the theoretical purpose. So they are called as embryonic stem cell or ipsi, uh, sorry, induced pluripotent stem cell. Here you can see the somatic cell taken from the skin. They can be reprogrammed to produce a uh, induced pluripotent stem cell, which can differentiate to any cell which has been required. Now, practically, stem cells, as you all know, are embryonic stem cells, tissue-specific stem cells, which we are using. Mesenchymal stem cells, including the umbilical cord, placenta-derived mesenchymal stem cell, or induced pluripotent stem cell, which I have just explained. Now. You, we know all very well that many decades back there was, uh, whenever there is a, uh, uh, you know, when there was a nuclear accident at that time also, whenever there is a nuclear accident, the, all the hematopoietic stem cell of all human beings, they just get destroyed. And whenever they get destroyed, definitely we can't survive for more than few days only. So clinical use of hematopoietic stem cells have been there in the country, around the globe with the various treatments of leukemia, which is legalized. And it is actually been, uh, you know, said to be a right way. But definitely with the developing time, with the need, we are going for a more specific use of stem cells. Now, stem cells can be further classified into totipotent, pluripotent, or multipotent. Totipotent is just like if you go back to a microbiology level, a fertilized egg, a fertilized egg, which can give rise to a human being is a totipotent. We are not bothered about that. Pluripotent, when this fertilized egg reaches to 5 to 14 uh, days, then the cell's collection can form ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. I think everybody can remember it uh, with the undergraduate level. So they are pluripotent. And the third is multipotent, which are the differentiated, well-differentiated adult stem cells present everywhere in the body, and they do their job whenever it is required. So this is a chart for the Fertilized egg, which is a totipotent, gradually pluripotent, 
and then the multipotent, which is the need of discussion for this evening. So totipotent cell have unlimited capacity. We are not bothered. Pluripotent giving rise to most tissue and multipotent specialized and committed cells. Now the sources of the stem cells. So as everybody know, embryonic sources are there, which is not legalized. Fetal stem cells, again, it's a matter of the question. Umbilical cord stem cell, the umbilical cord contain a lot of stem cells, plenty of mesenchymal stem cells. Then placenta, so all these fetal tissues are having it. And the finally fifth one is adult stem cell. All the tissue everywhere in the body, you name the organ and the organ is having a pool of these cells. But definitely the bank, the bank where the money is being deposited, which can be taken out, is the bone marrow adipose tissue. Now, bone marrow is very fantastic for orthopedic surgeon. We play with the bone marrow since decades, decades. If you remember, our professor used to give uh, bone marrow at the delayed union site 50, 20 years back. Still, it has been doing, uh, doing in, uh, at some places. So, they, that, that is a play of the team. That is why we are interested. So, whenever we do a cross-section of any umbilical cord, you can see the Wharton jelly, which is right there, is a rich source of these endowment stem cells. Now, the adult stem cells tissue, which are being used, they are more, can be used in ethical reason. And why we are mainly interested for the bone marrow? Because it has been seen and published that the bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells, they are more, uh, more uh, compatible, they are more having a better results in the reparative mechanism for orthopedic diseases. It's still a question of debate, which can't be handled right now here. But for all practical purpose, bone marrow stem cells are wonderful for us. Now, where these stem cells present? They are present at the bone marrow, as I've already said. So a stem cell niche is a house, is an area, which have got some cooler fans, water, heater, everything, just to take care of the stem cells. And that is present in the bone marrow. Now, these stem cells, they divide symmetrically and asymmetrically both. Symmetrically, they divide to give rise to two similar stem cells, and asymmetrically, they divide to give rise to a stem cell or to a differentiated stem cell. Now, when they divide asymmetrically, so that is asymmetrical division occur in the body just to maintain their population. And symmetrical cell division is something related in the vitro, in the labs, which is needed for, uh, you know, uh, the programming or uh, culturing the thing, which is again uh, with the ICMR and other guidelines is not legally being advocated. So when a stem cell divide, whenever it has been required, it divide with the need. So as I've already mentioned, resident stem cell live in the body silently and whenever it has been required, they do their job. Maybe it's a union, even, even if a normal union of a fracture occur is all because of the resident stem cells which are present below the periosteum in the cambium layer, which do the job. But only the thing we don't know it initially and we know it now. So these stem cells, they are, can be characterized according to the specific name. So hematopoietic stem cells, according to their surface marker, they can be characterized into CD34, CD45, 133. They are the specific lineage which has been used clinically for the specific purposes. And this is the old, old picture from... Uh, our uh, Harrison textbook, where we can see that how the stem cells can move ahead hematopoietic to found the RBCs, the WBCs, the specific B cells, T cells, which do a wonderful job in the lifetime. Typically, a mesenchymal stem cell has a spindle body with a long, thin processes and contain a nucleus. And these are the undifferentiated multipotent cells, which can form the osteoblast, chondroblasts, which is the need of the hour for the orthopedic surgeon whenever we require it. Similarly, the mesenchymal stem cell have also their different, different names. Some of them are mentioned here, 73, 90, 106, and they are present at all the places I've already mentioned. And they can form or anything which has been required, provided it is to be done in a proper way. Now, these mesenchymal stem cells, just like platelet or hematopoietic stem cell, they secrete the growth factor, which do the needed job of the angiogenesis or the regeneration, which has been there. And that is the reason which we are using or misusing it in a different conditions, like suppose uh, well, uh, cases or uh, all the cases, it can uh, be worked. Uh, now, these adult uh, stem uh, cells, uh, uh, they can generate the cell type.
So hematopoietic stem cells and the mesenchymal stem cell, they are the wonderful candidates which require a job. Now, every time people wondering that how this actually works. So it works on the principle of homing plasticity in graft. Suppose we have a sore throat and we take antibiotic. So antibiotic directly reach to the throat to take care of because it knows that that's the location which has been required. Similarly, if we place the stem cells, IV or intrathecally in the spinal cord, they reach to the particular site which has been required that they identify. So that is the thing which is homing. Now, once it reached to the particular site, it has a tendency to transform into that particular required cell, which is in need of the hour at that particular time. That is called as plasticity. And the third thing is when it formed that cells, particular type, which has been required at the particular site, it is presumed that it should be present with a person's lifetime. That is an engraftment. So, Griff engraftment, sorry. So, these are the three principles on which it works. And here you can see the osteogenesis, chondrogenesis, myogenesis, ligamentogenesis, tendinogenesis, it occur in the similar manner. And this is how we are able to do, we are able to find out how the Elizaro principle works, how the uh, uh, external fixator principle works, whenever there is a ligamentotexis and tendinogenesis being done. Of course, these stem cells can be cultured outside into different different categories, but it is again a topic of restriction to be used legally. The differentiating capacity of mesenchymal cells, they decrease with the age and that is why you can see the mesenchymal stem cells, they also age to some extent, rather in the sense they decrease their number and that is why sometime in the union rate in the elderly persons are less as compared to the children. Now, these, these mesenchymal stem cells, they also inhibit the B cells, the monocyte, which is the need of the hour whenever there is an immune reaction going on. Suppose we, we as an orthopedic surgeon, we deal with rheumatoid cases. So in the rheumatoid case, cases, whenever it is required, they can also do a wonderful job because of their immunomodulatory action. So they can kill the natural killer cells and they can stop the cell division of the B cells and that they can utilize it. Now, stem cells role in the transplant has also been there as, uh, as it had already been mentioned. CD34 is the wonderful marker, oh, sorry, wonderful cell which marks, which form all the blood forming cells. Similarly, NK cellular cell which are being used, NK cells to target tumors and it is again going gradually. Then the most important thing is presenting graft versus host reaction. We have heard many times that of the renal transplant, of the kidney transplant, the success rate has not been there. So at many centers in the country, they are, these cells are gain be used so that, that uh, the rejection of the liver, the renal transplant can be minimized and the success rate is more. So stem cells holds a positive future in various orthopedic condition, which faces a lot of challenges. We are orthopedic surgeons, so we are more mainly interested in this in the available treatment modality. This is a place uh, of 2015 when I went to San Francisco for UCFS for little, taking a little training there. Thank you so much, here are the references. And this is all as of now. Over to Dr. Swarn. Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Manish for an excellent lecture. And I think with the, that all sets the ball rolling. And there is a question from our senior colleague, Dr. Karne that is there any how, any difference of getting the stem cell if you get it from the bone marrow or if you get it, get it from the adipose tissue? So, uh, no, the stem cells are the same. In fact, the adipose tissue have a larger percentage of mesenchymal stem cells as compared to the bone marrow. But uh, it's again a matter of debate and many publications still advocate that, yes, the quality of the diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, avian, all those conditions, they have a better response with the mesenchymal stem cells taken out from the bone marrow as compared to the adipose tissue, but the things, they, both the things works together. If you want a larger concentration of mesenchymal stem cell, definitely adipose tissue is the wonderful alternative because in the bone marrow, the concentration is very less. Whatever advantages we are seeing for in the clinical uses, it is because of the paracrine effect of the growth factor secreted by the cocktail population of the cells in the bone marrow. But definitely, yes. And that is why the plastic surgeons are more familiar and they are using it wonderfully well. And the time will tell in a decade time when a line would be drawn that, yes, 
bone marrow and mesenchymal camel cells are more better for the orthopedic cases or uh, adipose tissue but adipose tissue is not a better better because it needs to be processed after taking it out with again a regulation portion is there and the bmac which we use is a minimal manipulation which in the clinical trial can be done so it's easier for orthopedic surgeon to play with bone marrow yes we are all always familiar with the bmac i think that suits us because that is easy otherwise if you get from the adipose tissue it's always a complex uh, thing for us because bmac machines are all very uh, much available throughout the country nowadays manish right. thank you so much yeah very true very true so i i request the next speaker to come and please uh, go ahead with your presentation yeah dr pa yeah. ananda pa our, our our next speaker, speaker today is uh, professor ak pal <laughs> from west bengal orthopedic association uh, professor anand kishor pal is a senior orthopedic surgeon in kolkata uh, welcome sir he will be speaking on uh, challenges in our orthopedic practice professor pal sir please good evening everybody so can i share my screen can i yeah, please please yeah. you can please share please share It is is it is it visible? It's visible, sir. Yeah. Okay. It just come. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening, everybody. So I'm very delighted to join this uh, on this uh, meeting. Actually, so this is this is a basically it's a different world, and this is the world of big. So I'm also in a part. I'm, I'm delighted to uh, give my experience. So there are several challenges, and there are several. as you can see here this is the case the cases that i have shown is in its younger person having different challenges suppose this is the case if you can see in heart and organ here this is another case so this is the same good then my hello i think somebody is two devices disturbing the whole session i Hello. think now the voices may be clear yeah so, now now these are clear okay uh, yeah, please, go Pal, ahead. please go ahead thank you Pal. this is another case we have encountered there are several challenges i have encountered some problems some these are some uh, the cases the problems are solved and some ones are already it is waiting to be solved so this is the case so this is treated by somebody else and treated by uh, some uh, fixation but now this is the secondary one that, that that has to be treated by the mega prosthesis and that requires a lots of bones where for the for its reconstruction for the holding the mega prosthesis in situ so this is the also this is another challenge so this is the revision uh, scenario so you can see here this is a semi arthroplasty that has almost uh, almost no bone uh, is kept over there so this is that uh, this total hip arthroplasty you can see here there are several infective changes and that has to be changed but see once we have uh, take it out so the most of the upper part of the, uh, the, the uh, femur will become taken out so this is another case you can see here process is dislocated as there is no posterior wall posterior is completely deficient over there so that has to be reconstructed to keep the processes in situ there is also another case where there is some see there are some uh, significant bone lesions are there and there is a possibility of secondary that have to be treated uh, by if it is a limb sparing surgery to be done the huge amount of bone graft may be required uh, or the bone substitute may be required in, in such a cases this is a 21 years female see this is a very young person the 6 months old non union of the neck of the femur so see and there and there also there is a sick complete almost complete absorption of the femoral neck and also there are some avascular necrotic changes of the femoral neck and that is just solved uh, with the help of this there is a reconstruction of the neck with the help of this uh, uh, there is a refreshing of the fracture site reconstruction of neck with the uh, auto autologous iliacus bone graft there is some uh, some uh, quadratus femoris muscle pedicle bone graft as also internal fixation so it requires a composite bone graft so if it is available now see this is a huge relation of this so if it requires a uh, reconstruction so either it requires a significant amount of bone graft or it may be require some bone substitutes similarly this is see this is a 34 years old uh, person who is treated somehow uh, elsewhere but it's complaining of severe pain along the uh, along the uh, back even after the operation it requires some spinal fusion and it requires some uh, some bone graft or bone graft substitutes this is a this is a elderly person 
it is complete is a, there is complete disorganized ankle requiring the fusion of the multiple joints in the elderly somebody almost it is a sharkot joint so it is very difficult to uh, get, get fusion of the sharkot joints it requires a significant there is a uh, bone craft uh, substitute this is the immature bone or the adult bone see there is almost whole of the diaphysis is uh, almost uh, becomes infected and is a large tubular cecostom once it is uh, taken out it is crumbled up and this is large bone gap is is uh, it, it is uh, uh, it is created this is another case this is old bone this adult person see this is what has happened to this this part of the bone this almost it is a uh, completely necrotic once you take it out that has to be reconstructed with the help of a large amount of bone graft either autologous or from other sources so this is another case this is a post infective non union with a large segmental sequestrum with a see this is this sequestrum is taken out and see there's some of the non union is a full blown non union with almost all the joints of the upper limb upper limbs is stiff and with there some significant uh, nerve injuries also and it was a challenging problem for the every orthopedic surgeon this is also another case this is 70 years old male no. is a large degloving injury around the, the, the arm and the elbow no. bone see the, there's a sequestration see the most all of the bones of the of the articular block become sequestrated so it requires if it requires it, it now the uh, the the, the soft tissue is relatively equally healthy that has to be recovered but what happened to the joint so now this is the problem even if the arthrodesis it is a significant amount of bone graft the bone substitutes this is a 40 year 5 years old male with infected non union see this infected non union of the shop and also the non infected non union of the neck of the femur so it requires uh, several uh, it is a challenging problem as so it requires several treatment uh, for making this non infected to uh, non, um, uh, infected to non infected non union followed by some osteosynthesis which requires a large amount of bone graft uh, or otherwise some of synthetic bone graft or otherwise so this is a post traumatic post infective post operative see this is the elizar of is done it is almost uh, almost one year down the line for several treatments options was treated but ultimately uh, even after the removal of the uh, elizaro you see there is a, there is a non union is developed whatever the the fibula has become ignited but there is still there the non union is there the significant uh, the bone gap is there and now the patient is uh, almost helpless so what we have done so this is the bone graft substitute you see this is the intraosseous bone grafting is done at the at the level of the upper part which is avoiding the non union part the upper part and also the lower part avoiding the non union part the upper part and also the lower part now, now this is uh, going to become consolidated in uh, in fact so the, there are several options like autograft allograft bone marrow substitute aspirate uh, so the ceramics ceramic based bone graft substitute plated rich plasma plated rich fibrin and bone morphogenic protein and so allograft it is used in combination with the carrier its clinical use is mostly in the spine surgery as a bone graft extender rather than a single effective orthobiologic solution there are also reports on its use in clinical ankle fusion and the treatment of unicameral bone cyst in combination with autologous grafting so there are several authors uh, which uh, proved that there is a bone marrow aspirate concentrate it is especially it is taken from the iliac crest it has a excellent osteo inductive properties and that as it stimulate the bone growth and the angiogenesis but it as it lacking the bone osteo conductive properties it is most effective when it is combined with os allograft or the ceramic scaffold but there are some cell free techniques of the mesenchymal stem cells for obtaining the combination of the growth factors secreted into the supernatant so called the secretome it has a promising results it is described by some authors now bone void fillers it is very common in orthopedic practice it is based on the tricalcium phosphate calcium phosphate and the calcium sulfate the examples of the ceramic crafts it is marketed in different forms from injectable to pellets or the blocks it has a, that advantage is a low cost and the low risk profile as they only act as a osteoconductive materials so they are usually combined with other orthobiologics such as the bone morphogenic proteins the bone morphogenic proteins is a part of the transforming growth factor beta superfamily it is a potent agent in bone formation through the osteoconduction so far there are bone morphogenic protein 2 and 7 has been approved by the fda still it is in 2014 they have they have uh, discontinued the use they have advised to discontinue the use of this still after that the currently the only the fda approved indications are the anterior lumbar intrabody fusion 
and also the open tibial sharp fractures after the intermediate nailing. The bone morphogenic proteins are considered as the coating material for the implants for osteointegration and resistance to infection, as reported by the Goodman. Now, there are several complications of the bone morphogenic proteins like the heterotropic bone formation, wound complications due to seroma formation, severe soft tissue swelling, carcinogenesis, and being subject to dilution and the losing effectiveness being soluble in that being a soluble protein is a very uh, disadvantage. To cover up the disadvantage, uh, there, so there are several uh, the some uh, more products are advocated like the bisphosphonate. Uh, bone morphogenic proteins is also increase the osteoclast formation, which may result in the drop resorption. To overcome this effect, the bisphosphonate, either systemically or the local bisphosphonate delivered by the ceramic carriers is advocated in combination of the bone morphogenic proteins and the result in an increased mineralized volume of the neocortex and the carrots. The PRP, as you all just uh, heard from uh, uh, Manish sir, it will provide the growth factors to the living cells for the repair. It is efficient for the soft tissue repair like the tennis elbow, rotator cuff tear, plantar fasciitis, etc. But there are contract, contradicting reports on its effectiveness with most clinical studies failing to show improved clinical outcome in spinal fusion or the high tibial osteotomy. Ligament tendon repair, it needs augmentation. Why? Because during repair, injured tissue is replaced by the newly synthesized matrix. In ideal conditions, a ligament or the tendon can gain up to 60 to 70% of its original structure in six months but the repair process continues up to the many years. There are several authors prove that. DPR quality depends on the initial trauma, the gap between the torn sites, and the stability during the repair. Orthobiologics, including the biologic modulation, crafting, and other techniques, such as the gene therapy, may be tried for the augmentation. Augmentation of the ACL reconstruction, like the PRP, bone substitutes, calcium phosphate hybridized crafts, and autologous stem cells are tried for the augmentation. Hickstar et al. in 2018 concluded that most of the studies are the preclinical, and there's a still a need for extensive clinical studies to support their use. Now, orthobiologics in Achilles tendon rupture. So there are numerous studies that suggest the PRP augmentation after the Achilles tendon repair results in faster recovery, while as many of which fail to show such benefits. The PMAC also tried for the good results. Now, there are biologic matrix augmentation is another method of orthobiologics technique in Achilles tendon repair, which offers the increased repair strength as well as acts as a scaffold for the cellular ingrowth. Its use is especially beneficial in chronic and the complex injuries, but there is still not enough evidence to conclude augmentation superiority over the traditional methods. Now, rotator cuff tear, platelet rich plasma, biologic matrix augmentation, synthetic scaffold growth factors, as also the stem cells are the most studied topics in the rotator cuff tears. Charles, they have several observations as they have noted that PRP does not provide a benefit and is not cost effective also. They also found that the matrix augmentation instead provide the mechanical reinforcement, which lowers the tear rates as also the better functional outcome. Synthetic traps alone were found to be unable to enhance the growth as well as the matrix patches. So therefore, they concluded the combination of the matrix patches as also the growth factors may provide the best environment for the repair, while the, the mesenchymal stem cells use still lacks the evidence. Future research is channeled to tissue the engineering with a focus on the combination of the nanofiber scaffold as also the stem cells. Now, use of the, this demineralized bone matrix to induce the tendon bone healing is another uh, study uh, to by the osteo ossification, similar to the original enthesis. Now, in this is a stress transferring specific interface attaching the ligaments and the tendon to the bone. The human body is unable to generate the same enthesis after the injury, and the healing results in a weaker biomechanical structure, which is more susceptible to the re rupture. So, orthobiologics is it has an extensive role to enhance the healing, and this demineralized bone matrix it shows the potential to animal studies in order to achieve the significant improvement in enthesis healing. And the combination of the orthobiologics require the further investigation. And Hexter et al. Because we have uh, suggested that with clinical data on this topic, re-rupture problems after the ACL reconstruction, rotator cuff, as also the tendon Achilles uh, repair, may be significantly reduced. Now, injury of the articular cartilage. So whether we are satisfied with the repair, there are natural intrinsic healing capacity of the articular cartilage is limited, all of you know. 
The cartilage defects heal with the scar tissue originating from the subchondral bone and the structure is dip different in to hyaline cartilage. So once it repaired occurs, it is, be, it is repaired with a second hand cartilage, that's the fibrocartilage, which is, uh, there are several con uh, conventional treatment like the microfracture, osteochondral autographs, transplantation, there is uh, autologous chondrocyte transplantation, implantation, as also osteochondral allografts. But they produce the fibrocartilage and not the hyaline cartilage. So this is a secondhand cartilage, which is load bearing capacity is very less. So there are the attempts of augmentation of the healing of the articular cartilage can be done by several authors, whereas the plectrate is passed by a potential candidate in cartilage healing. As in the in vitro study showed that importance of the leukocyte concentration of the PRP and the efficiency of the delivery system, such as the hydrogel in the treatment of the cartilage damage, may be its efficient technique for repair of the art articular cartilage. Now, the regeneration, is it possible? Regeneration of the articular cartilage, is it possible? Attempts it was done by the Bongso and Lee 2010. Although the positive results are being reported in the preclinical setup, more clinical data is required in order to make a conclusion on this new concept. In addition, complex regulatory requirements are one of the reasons to slow down the advancement of the cellular therapies. Now, again, in continuation of this, uh, this attempt, there are several authors like the Huang et al. in 2016. They have studied extensively with the chondrocyte seeded scaffold and the matrix induced autologous chondrocyte implantation, where the donor site chondrocytes or the mesenchymal stem cells are seeded into the scaffolds made of the hydrogen based bio absorbed bioresorbable polylactic co glycolic acid elements in the agarose This cell based step is then sutured or glued to the recipient area with the help of this cyanoacrylate. And there are several growth factors were used, such as that, that, that is tissue growth factor, beta 1, and the bone morphogenic proteins for enhancing the chondrocyte expansion. And this expansion is necessary to increase the number of the chondrocytes and their, their extracellular matrix deposition, they are achieving the biochemical integrity. Not only that, the mechanical loads, hydrocharges also added to stimulate the chondrocytes. So the biological environment is also provided, as also the mechanical loads are also provided for the regeneration of the articular cartilage, but still under uh, investigation. And is, uh, we are uh, looking after what is the better future for complete regeneration of the articular cartilage. So therefore, there, along with the complex challenge in the osteopathic practice, there are gradual evolution of the orthobiologics which has been emerged as a panacea for complex orthopedic problems in future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Professor Paul, for an excellent and elaborate lecture for that new, basically, horizon for most of the people, those who are unaware of this thing. So uh, we'll take questions afterwards. I think, Professor Manis, you can go ahead with your talk on orthobiologics mm -hmm. in uh, the regenerative uh, biologics, OK? Yeah, yes, sir. actually. I Wonderful talk. Actually, there is several. We circulated this at among my students. Yeah, I know. So, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Pal, for wonderful uh, description of the challenges which we face in our clinical practice. And the things are easy now. Well, uh, there are a lot of challenges which can be worked up, and we have seen these challenges just in the last 10 15 minutes. But actually, what and where are the clinical needs of regenerative science in orthopedics in the metal practice that we have to work it up? Before this, let us see what the stalwarts are saying. It like Nancy Reagan had said uh, very decade, many decades back that science has presented as the hope for the stem cell research, and just we are moving ahead in the same direction. Well, 1998 was the first year when this research was being started after extracting the stem cells from the uh, uh, embryos. So that was a year when uh, we were just finishing our PGs. And then gradually over the years, we can see here by 2004 and 2004, how the ballot Howard researchers grows the stem cells and gradually the ban was been uh, uh, lifted by President Obama. Then the federal funding was being started. That was the time when there was a lot of a boom in Great Britain, still we are having very liberal policies. In France, less liberal policies. Germany's are having a very strict policies. In our country also, we have a strict policies, regulated policies for the research work. Well, definitely, uh, I think I have taken out a wrong lecture. Mm. 
can i continue with the introduction uh, of the journey of orthopalgics right now after taking that if everybody allow yeah me. yeah please 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 manish please so i was just yeah. i was just wondering that why just uh, anyway stem cell uh, study group was been registered trust uh, in 2015 and uh, it was ortho regenerative group which was been started taking the care of all the challenges which we feel and uh, gradually in 2018 it was been registered as a association also it's a registered body the aim was to create awareness among clinicians the researchers about this newer development in the field to reuse favor and stimulate all the research work which has been needed and which we can do here to create and develop international scientific relation with rest of the world to elaborate deepen and radiate all the knowledge acquired in the domain because we feel that we are rich in uh, clinical material that's a good part of our country so we have lot of clinical material lot of clinical work can be done and we are trying to establish this branch with the, having international level and we are also moving ahead further it was started in 2015 way back at madurai when indian orthopedic rheumatology conference was been done and uh, at that time the first meeting was been done then in 2016 another meeting was been done where the avian protocol was been discussed which is still been present on the website in 2016 we had a, a meeting in a guwahati conference uh, aircon conference and at that time it was been decided from 2017 we had a gold medal session in our conference which was been given to young orthopedic surgeons specifically because it is ortho regenerative group who are uh, doing a lot of research work any paper publication in context to indian uh, indian uh, sorry uh, regenerative science since it is a evidence based practice and it has to be evidence based module for promoting it so we were trying to present all the work with the newsletter which was been started in 2017 we had a national uh, cmes also started in 2017 and the first was being done at bhuvaneshwar gradually uh, indian stem cell study group has already is having collaboration with our journal international journal of orthopedic rheumatology which is an index journal in index copernicus which is still been uh, till this year useful but definitely it is also uh, having a station at indian citation index so that's good for all the assistant professor or anybody who is taking the advantages we are inviting all the original paper meta analysis systemic reviews and the case series as uh, considered by nmc so uh, in 2019 we had a third international conference at pune where the dana anderson uh, from uk who is a chair who uh, is chair in the biomedical sciences was the uh, person who did the keynote lecture we had a workshop also at all india institute there uh, gradually we started our fellowship program in which uh, the indian stem cell study group participated and this fellowship program is been endorsed by rm law university the teaching curriculum in orthobalgic is the most most rewarding thing which is we are doing in the fellowship program last year uh, we had a biennial fourth conference at all india institute of medical sciences raipur we have we have placed the white paper which is still been there in the icmr but nothing is been uh, given and we are hopeful that they will be just coming out with some new guidelines on this and the proceeding of this conference has already been there on the website so these are the various uh, we have a uh, tie up with the vit biotechnology department vit vellore a famous university and also with the test the trans european stem cell society to take care of the various programs and for the last two years we are all we are already in lot of webinars we have already done lot of webinars uh, throughout the country for the last two years this is a textbook of orthopedic rheumatology we are dedicated chapters on regenerative orthopalgics are been there so one can go for it uh, we are also already have started a fellowship program for the uh, regenerative orthopalgic still going on relation with swiss clinic and uh, so so rather the main thing is we have to support initiative promoting the basic and transitional research for the use of stem cell treatment in orthopedic disorder that is the aim and hope in coming two threes of time will reach to a wonderful level and here is a slide which we will inviting you to lucknow 
for the next icon in next year to see the wonderful river, Lucknow Riverfront. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry for sharing this presentation. So it goes on a uh, wrong way. Thank you so much. So over to uh, Dr. Sam Swaran. Uh, yes, yes. May, I, think, uh, may yes, I request our... may I request our immediate past president, uh, Professor Dilip Pojunda, sir, to please. Uh, Actually, go uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, I'm really, uh, really amazed to see that uh, the thing that we were teaching long ago to the postgraduate about the bone and the bone structure. That is to feel a cavity, breathe a bone, to block a motion, fuse a giant. That has been changed over by the stem cells to breathe the, breathe the cavity and breathe the, fill the cavity, breathe the bone, and breathe any tissue in the body. Number one. Number two observations that I heard from the artificial intelligence. Chief in the artificial, artificial intelligence 2016, but Manish has told about that the stem cell and the stem cell as you mean, it is a very uh, common thing that from Mahabharata you know that the birth of the corona is from the uh, skin cell from the ear and how the skin cell from the ear came to become the uh, this uh, uh, your uh, totipotent mesenchymal cell to produce the body that was there in our mythology also so about all these things background, the concept is there and has been now. So friends, all of you are sitting here to get some answers for your usual queries from this august galaxy of this Star Wars. As the immediate past president of the IORA 2019-2022, have worked for the IORA and witnessed a number of outstanding development in the academics, master classes, organizational activities, Yearly 20 orthopedic rheumatology fellowships from the Lucknow Law University, bi monthly webinars, grand Calcutta International Conference. That is the, all credits goes to N. Mukherjee and our Keska. Along with that, the team, excellent team of Sardinandu and your uh, Pal and your Sharka. So I, we actually, uh, we actually indebted to them. The book on the orthopedics of rheumatology had shown just now as a publication and the index journal, Copernicus, that is the journal of leasing for all, workshops and many more, including the vision of a subtle proposal from the vice chancellor to try for the MCH course for the IORA fellows soon. A new future fee there may be added if a, uh, Professor Manish will agree with me with a novel ICL, that is the instructional course lecture in orthopedic rheumatology, to be initiated by our stalwarts and our assets at an ex exotic locations in our country or abroad. So now, the impending questions of the many minds are orthobiologists and its development, stem cell research and its role in orthobiology today, what is the need of the hour of orthobiology, why is it necessary to customize and not standardize the individual treatment in orthobiology? How far useful all these generations of the orthopedic surgeons? Can it be useful for all other auxiliary branches or independent branches of the IORA? What are the hindrances for its growth in our country? As already been told about the legal issues. And what are the MOU that we have one MOU have done in front of us in, in the Switzerland? about the foreign countries to the bilateral research. So it's future research and publications. Many of the gray areas can be awaiting to see the light of the day. Till then, I would request all the river teachers and professors to initiate more publication in the future to enrich the young minds to glory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dilida. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. So, uh, with the permission of uh, Professor Das, uh, should I go for yeah. the next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yes, Professor so, Manish, it is your talk. Yeah. Oh.
well applications of uh, well it is not a new uh, field for the uh, medical uh, research as such because in the animals it has been used in many condition for treating various disorders like osteoarthritis there a lot of work is being done but for human being it is definitely a most and most important thing which required to be pondered upon well fracture healing uh, i think lot of been uh, already been propagated and and we have seen that lot of cases can be very well managed with the fracture healing non union delayed union a great challenge cartilage repair osteoarthritis rheumatoid arthritis tendon and skeletal muscle repair moving to spinal cord regeneration a very gray area because a lot of uh, mismanagement has still been there so we will not go in detail for this it require a different uh, level actually definitely avascular necrosis head of the femur uh, just a second let me move it everybody avascular necrosis head of the femur sports injuries partial acl injuries meniscal injuries not all the types critical limb ischemia well this we have already done that whenever a dynamization still fails what is the right condition where you can pop in the prp or b map to stimulate the healing now i think a very important answer has already been there why the bone healing is faster in children because they have 10 times more stem cells per milliliter as compared to the adult and that is the reason whatever the trauma has been there usually we are not bothered with the surgical intervention at most of the time it is good healed up and with a good remodeling also be done well lot of the answers that how this healing has been there it already been initiated and i'll just want to conclude it whenever there is a damage whenever there is a damage to soft tissue whenever there is a fracture that always platelet at that particular time they release the growth factor which is the first cascade in healing mechanism because they stimulate the angiogenesis because as orthopedic surgeon we are very much scared about the blood vessels so if the vascularity at that part is good healing is good because the carrier is there the vessels are there to bring the things whenever there is a fracture whenever there is a injury the gccf released from the endothelium they they send the signal to the bone marrow that please sends the cells to heal the things so that is why the gccf stimulate the migration of the stem cells from the bone marrow the msc's from the bone marrow which they reach to the side they differentiate and does the healing occur so this is how the healing occur actually and this has been explained here similarly now what is a delayed union and non union so currently what we are for the decades working up with the definition is a site where the fracture has a less healing potential to unite but now we are very much aware that with the age of the person as i have already mentioned as the age increases the cells number decreases their activity decreases and along according to the genetic profile also the healing has been delayed so right now the definition cellular definition of delayed union or non union is it is the site where the msc's or the stem cells has a poor status of proliferation or differentiation so it has been experimentally proved by flow cytometry that whenever abnormal stress is been given the union is better and that we can see whenever decades back we used to give a ptb at the delayed union tbi fracture the it works by walking it actually stimulates similarly on elizaro or limb lengthening procedure whenever we stimulate the walking it is simply a compressive mode which is stimulate the resident stem cell at that particular point and the union occurs so it is the same thing which we knew only we are now into the details the micro details that we are able to prove that why the positive biomechanical role in orthopedics is important for me it is a 25 year old journey while treating with a resistant and neglected club foot every time whenever we used to treat we found that with the uh, ligamento taxis with the arthro this diastasis the articular cartilage of the talus it remodels so it remodels again because of the same mechanism so that is how 
uh, in 2013, I found some literature also proving that distraction of osteoarthritic ankle, which is useless as such, but with the literature, it has been proven that the remodeling of the subchondral bone can occur. So whenever there is a distraction, the activation of endogenous pool of cells is there, which may be in the synovium, which may be in the periosteum, which may be the subarticular space, provided it is not being damaged aggressively. And because of the release of growth factor, the remodeling occurs. So answers are there that how the cartilage can be regenerated, how the cartilage can be regrowth properly. And well, publications, full of publications are there. It's not practically possible to share everything that it works very well whenever the ligamentotaxis is being done, histogenesis is being done, osteogenesis is being done. And that is why the blood vessels also grow. Because the idea is simply to stimulate the growth of the blood vessels and along the blood vessels, the nerves also go. It's a simultaneous process. And that is why the regeneration occur. Now, a very important question, why a adult chondrocyte of the knee don't get regenerated whenever the cartilage injury is there? Because of the various reasons that the chondrocytes, they are meshed in a very thick cartilage meshwork, the vascularity is less. So the regeneration is there. So it is directly proportional to the vascularity, truly speaking. Now, patient with the, uh, who experienced non-union, maybe due to the metabolic bone disorder, such as osteogenic imperfecta. Osteogenic imperfecta is another condition which has a lot of good results with the uh, stem cells. Way back in 1999, Harvard et al. have reported three children who have been transplanted with allogenic MSCs from HLA-compatible sibling. And the result was marvelous, very good with the differentiation of the osteoblast. For me, it is a journey which I started in 2012 when uh, being, because doing a lot of club food. So this child came to me uh, thinking that there was some deformity, but actually it was osteogenic imperfecta. We have taken a help from uh, some banks and uh, free uh, MSC was being given to these children. Every time whenever the mother was changing the nappy, there was a fracture, a lot of fracture was been occurring. And this was the deformity. This was the fractures and MSCs were given at three, three intervals of one month apart. And gradually, uh, the patient had a good milestone, the fracture decreased. And uh, this patient was in follow-up for four or five years to me uh, from southern part of the country. And then I lose the follow up until then it was working very well. So it is definitely not a permanent treatment, but still it is proving that how it works. It will take decades together to work up, but definitely condition like avian head of the femur or a very mild stage of OA or uncontrolled arthritis, RA arthritis, which have got a lot of bumpy roads because the treatment is like waxing and winning always. They have a good treatment with uh, stem cells, maybe rheumatoid or osteoarthritis, especially those conditions the surgical intervention is not appropriate. As a patient coming with a grade 2, grade 1 arthritis, who are definitely not a candidate. So if we imply these principles, then definitely there are good results. Rheumatoid arthritis or in OA, uh, say for the rheumatoid arthritis, what we want? We want an anti-inflammatory effect. We want an immunosuppressive effect for the knee. So mesenchymal stem cell, they can differentiate into the different lineage and they can do a good. The mechanism probable is that whatever the MSCs are there, they stimulate the collagen 2 synthesis, which act as an autoantigen in RA and lead to suppression of the T cells, which we want. Here is a uh, case. Now this case again uh, came to us for uh, arthroplasty, knee replacement. And uh, we don't know how this is, uh, I think in 2014 actually. And definitely we don't want to go for any uh, stem cell therapy, but for the sake of the patient, we did it. And we found that definitely the result worked. You can see in a six months of period of time, the joint line, which was hazy, appeared very well. Some of the osteophyte decreased. The joint line was a little bit gain. The haziness decreased. Definitely this is again not the end of the story. We again lost this follow-up after two years of the time. But actually the patient have revived the symptoms, the things were improved, the walking was improved and the results worked. So we need a documentation that it works. Definitely in rheumatoid cases, we want a chondrogenesis, immunosuppression, anti-inflammatory, all the three things can work with the local uh, infiltration. Similarly in osteoarthritis, 
the denuded cartilage can be regenerated. And as I've already mentioned, the adult chondrocytes, which are uh, lying in the cartilage, they are not able to multiply, but below that adult chondrocyte, thick cartilage layer, there is a subchondral layer where a good amount of stem cells are there, which can be stimulated, by, which can be even stimulated by brisk walking, not only by PRP or BMAP, but even a brisk walking. You know, our forefather used to uh, say, or our professor used to say, still it is working. Our patient of a mild osteoarthritis is asked to do a brisk walking. Definitely what we are going to do is we are trying to stimulate the Sanovel MSCs, the endogenous progenitor cell, and a reported that a good cartilage thickness can be gained. If you go to the Google, you can search, you can find out what good thickness of the cartilage can be gained simply by brisk walking. So the moral of the story, it works very well. Only we have to find out what the case is to be done. Definitely X, Y, Z, all the cases of OA are not to be attempted because if a mechanical axis is deviated, it can't be regained. So you need a mechanical alignment in that case. You need a high tubal osteotomy in that case to find it out whether it has to be corrected. And then, of course, you can inject the BMAC or PRP. Similarly, in advanced in arthroscopy, where the cultured cartilage transfer has been done throughout the country, it has got a wonderful result. Only the thing is, we do need to have a proper case selection that whether we require a collagen or HA hyaluronic acid to be placed along with it or not. As been uh, pointed out by Professor Paul, definitely for IDK, the partial ACL tear, it's a wonderful thing to have a partial ACL tear regenerated by using a PRP or BMAC. And the thing is only a bioactive uh, factor is the growth factor which do the jobs. Advantages of MSC is being injected in partial tear because we know in the partial tear, the problem is the fibroblast. That they are not able to be regenerated. But since the uh, progenitor cells are there or MSCs are there, they can differentiate into fibroblasts and a good regeneration can be worked up. Similarly, for the meniscal repair, yes, but definitely not a displaced meniscus, a bucket handle tear does not require anything, but definitely whenever a meniscal injury, initial part of the injury, or when a degeneration of the meniscus is there, which was been proven by Sentino et al. in 2008, where you can see on the upper end, the articular cartilage is very thinned off, and after MSCs, the, it has been taken off. So this is a thing which we need to be documented. Similarly, the meniscus, which has been again very well degenerated, it is again regained inside. So it worked, but only the case selection has to be maintained. And definitely in all these conditions, paraplegic conditions, I'll just place this slide here, where a lot of things can be done by PRP, by regeneration, only if it is not progressing to extend, because ultimately if the patient is finally paraplegic, it is going to have a bad prognosis if there's no recovery. But if the recovery is there, then the works very well. Similarly, avascular necrosis, head of the femur, which is again very challenging, with a lot of uh, challenges are there. If a right case has been selected, like a case where the, where the crescent sign is just up here, ideally, there should not be uh, subchondral collapse, but even if a partial subchondral collapse is there, but of course, the articular cartilage is being maintained, the joint line is still maintained. Then with the tissue engineering principle, by using the G-bone or the grafts, along with the BMAP, one can do a good result. Of course, the core decompression has to be done properly, and then it is to be given here. Now, this is a case of 30-year-old male with MRI showing a crescent sign, partial subchondral collapse, you can appreciate here, with a mild joint uh, effusion. And with the MRI, we have to find out what is the location where we need a core decompression to de de debulk it and then to place the cells into it. The procedure was being done. And finally, one and a half year after, we can see still the joint line has been made. And people ask me what we have gained. We have gained only two things. No collapse has been there. Since no collapse has been there for one and a half year, this patient is still in our touch. Still the no collapse has been there. Although in radiologically, we don't find very much, uh, you know, uh, growth. Definitely the cystic changes have been decreased. The osteo, uh, osteoblast activity is increased. But since the collapse has not been there, so we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, gained our aim actually for uh, progressing of the disease. 
but actually in all these cases the stage of the disease is very important the location and amount of the bone involved is also very important and underlying causes suppose underlying causes is a long steroid history and the patient is still on the steroid so there is no use of giving going for a decompression and for a bmap so again the case selection is very important similarly in all the condition like where we are receiving critical ischemia for example this patient diabetic patient who have lot of problem always with the critical ischemia where lot of necrosis has been there so definitely this toe is already been out but it is progressing in all these condition we have to assess where the culprit is where the blockage is and there with the treatment we can go for uh, uh, regeneration gradually cerebral palsy i think i have placed a different slide so you are not able cerebral palsy is again a condition where still the researchers are working where the hematopoietic or mesocycle stem cell combination can be treated very well if placed intrathecally this is a case uh, which was been treated for many years back and i can't go for the very much detail uh, i'm so sorry this is a case of a rheumatoid arthritis actually placed uh, with the error uh, let me see if uh, this video works here so oh, i'm so sorry so this was a uh, uh, this was a case actually see rheumatoid arthritis are not supposed to be treated with uh, stem cells only and only if it is a bad case the bad case in this case was she was not responding to folitrex she was having side effect with folitrex with different other uh, uh, bm uh, different other dmrds and that is why it was been given and till still this patient is from lucknow she is in touch with us almost 6 years have been passed and uh, the patient is very well because the aim for the dmrds or aim for the rheumatoid uh, sorry uh, bmac is simply to make the disease silent we always explain to the patient it is not going to cure it but just to make it in the uh, regression phase that is the aim similarly in the uh, cerebral palsy it works very well so i'm not going into much detail we i can say only this thing that we carry lot of controversy lot of promises with the stem cell with the regenerative part only the time will going to tell how much we are going to reach to our goal but definitely definitely if the right cases are been pointed out at right time like avian or grade 1 osteoarthritis grade 2 osteoarthritis definitely we are going to decrease the surgical replacement over the years together in the country which is almost a need of our because everybody is earning in that way out so regenerative medicine is a lot of ray hope thank you so much for a patient hearing thanks so thank much. you dr manish for an excellent talk i think uh, uh, dr madan is going is here madan dr madan you are here dr madan can you take the questions yeah yes sir yes sir and definitely manish uh, many of the gray areas uh we will we will see the light of the day soon as i told right sir so mother sir one first yes sure. sir one question any idea whether stem cells are useful in type 1 diabetes in children uh it's asked by karni sir uh well uh, actually type 1 diabetes is a area when the islet uh, pancreatic islet they are not producing uh the uh, so, uh, so so that is a problem and in those cases lot of trial has been done lot of work has been done and uh, to some extent there is uh, two school of thought because the aim is when we as i have already mentioned when we place mscs these mscs are the right candidate for diabetes for cerebral palsy for rheumatoid arthritis because we require a lot of good population of million of cells to reach to the part which is not possible by bmap so whenever the msc is been injected iv the idea is simply because most of the mscs are been filtered in the liver or sorry in the lungs 30 40% whatever it reach to the target area the aim is to regenerate the pancreatic islet cell so that they can produce the insulin so in some cases the results are been very good 
in some cases they have used it by placing uh, the way, uh, the uh, the catheter right to the pancreas and injecting the cell is there so definitely uh, in all these cases it works together as far as i was just discussing with the rheumatoid case this case the lady which i have just mentioned was having all so the diabetes so with the with the msc injecting in the blood it also reached to the uh, uh, to the site of the uh, pancreas but that was the type 2 diabetes in which the islet uh, of the pancreas cell the beta cells were actually becoming resistant type but with this they start secreting it again so it works very well also in that case but that is yeah. not a cup of tea actually yeah. that's why i asked this question because of one of my relatives he's just a 6 year old old boy 6 year and 2 years ago he was detected at the age of 4 years rejected to have a diabetes uh, type 1 and uh, actually my brother is endocrinologist in us as well as nephew but they are little bit against the stem cell that they said we don't have the any evidence because the, the umbilical cord blood is also saved So I said, why not uh, harvest the uh, stem cell from that and put into pancreatic artery? As you said, that we can put directly into pancreatic artery, so the all the cells will go at the site of the where it is required. So I just wanted to know how your opinion about it. So it works very so well, but it is all under cover of uh, uh, carpet. Yes, Dr. Madan, please. Sir, uh, there are a lot of researches going on in PG Chandigarh under the Professor Anil Bansali, who is doing a lot of work on diabetes. both type 1 type 2 as well as juvenile diabetes his publications are are very well there on the website we can actually go through you will get the proper answers everything was explained by professor manish kanna but still if you are having the yeah, lot of doubts the doses frequency you can go through the publications which is available in the website sir only the issue is sir that uh, since it is under the carpet so it's not been done with a full fledged efforts because mscs are been utilized and uh, cultured mscs or mscs taking from uh, umbilical cord is not legal actually so but it has been done and it is also not legal in us also you know what in sfo in US, uh, the san francisco there are mushrooming uh, uh, platforms where the stem cell has been used so it is it is a difficult task but definitely it works the legal concern the more concern is you know carcinogenicity that is a only so it is that. carcinogenicity would not be there if you are not using any cultured cells if you are using a amniotic cord or umbilical cord cell then only that case the carcinogenicity will not be there dr madan what's your view on this sir uh, whenever uh, mscs they won't have any tumor genicity as such only induced pluripotent stem cells we have to worry about tumor genicity so in that case manish kana sir has already explained everything in in detail in two lectures so the same principle works with all the diseases with respect to stem cells either it is msc or bma except uh, induced pluripotent stem cells can i ask cells, a question please sir sir can yes, i yes 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 uh, there are two questions in fact one is uh, by uh, chance i uh, used to go and visit cmc velour a uh, few years back also in uh, the bagayam where they have the rehabilitation center there is a stem cell unit and i tried dr suranjan one uh, was leading that unit once he retired i tried to know that what is going on there but no one uh, you know disclose or tells you but that was a big unit you know that's a big unit i have seen there i have been there but no one discloses what is going on there that's a big uh, i mean question mark before me that what is the thing going on there i'm sorry to say you this because i have visited there many a times i have seen that but no one tells you what's going on there number one point is this can can you uh, if you can uh, give some highlight on this a second thing is this few uh, i mean one or two year, years back also there is a regular practice that once a baby is born his umbilical cord uh, blood is taken and they will say that we will keep this as a stem cell uh, reservoir and um, if you need in future you will uh, culture and do the thing so what is the i mean story like is that something right or it's a gimmick like so many babies are coming up okay. so where are the bad thing said maafi a pranam so two things first two. one you asked about uh, cmc velur now there yeah. is one surgeon called uh, riksha madri she is a pediatric surgeon i know i know i know i know riksha uh, madri i know personally 
she is but... doing lot of works in osteogenesis imperfecta which is a genetic disease and she is uh, correcting in utero as well as after postnatal life also she is doing some work and recently she has uh, presented all her works in tnoa con as a orator first thing okay second one uh, she is using um, a fetal liver stem cells yeah for that she is following a protocol which is uh, taken from sweden they have some uh, mou with sweden university and they are doing the works in cmc vellore the second one uh, you asked for what is the role of umbilical cord yes the umbilical cord yes the, uh, umbilical cord usually we can keep 15 cm of umbilical cord as a reservoir later in life if we need any stem cell we can procure that but there is no need for such a reservation any time any uh, in our body we can take the cells from either bone marrow or our adipose tissue or any pul dental pulp cells anywhere from the body we can take but there are there is a practice that they are storing umbilical cord or umbilical cord blood or what and jelly but still it is not mandatorily we have to save it we can take from our body at any point of time we yeah, can take yeah. our bone marrow from that we can isolate msc and we can culture if we, if we need so i don't think there is a necessity sir to and to yeah. add on one thing more uh, like uh, uh, dr mukherjee basically the government uh, like icmr and uh, tcj they are propagating for research clinical trials and that is little difficult to get at all the places except at big big institutes so all these like dr garsha madhuri is also doing a trial all there are few places in our country where the research clinical trial is being done and only then it can be disclosed properly which is again a issue uh, for That's not being at many places uh, it's been disclosed and secondly as dr madan has already tell, told that uh, it is a eye wash to some extent because whenever we are requiring a stem cell for our patient if we are for our family member if we are going back to those uh, companies who have taken out those cord and kept in them after 3 4 years the question is the how far the possibility of maintaining that at minus 40 degree centigrade in their um, uh, you know at particular place of the storage has been maintained secondly requiring lot of million of mscs for any particular treatment which can be taken out again uh, by the adipose tissue or you can go for any bank and they can again give you because they are again going to go ask for your money and culturing is not been advisable it is always better to take a fresh msc rather than to take a preserved mscs so it is not of much use actually Thank you, sir. Another one more question is there. What yeah. is the role of uh, orthobiologics in atrophic non-union by Dr. Manav? So, atrophic yes, non-union yes. is the most important non-union which we are treating uh, surgically, and definitely there is no role at all for atrophic non-union if it is uh, yes, long-standing because a lot of fibrous tissue would be there. So, you need to go for a revision. go for a plating and whatever it may be like and later on it will be a fresh case for you you can work it up for that patient for few months and later on whenever it's been required then under image intensifier one can place a prp that will do work good or a bmac later on whenever it's required but don't rely on atrophic non union to give a stem cell and plan for it we need a conventional revision surgery just like we are doing it for a long time i think i think this base uh, this stem cell is only for the delayed union when the time frame somehow it is delayed is never with the Correct. your atrophy because it will give your vascularity is not it is not going to help anyway actually actually uh well manish if i can so sir, i will sir, i will, I will request another uh, one one friend dr rajesh gupta he is silent for a long rajesh your comments or any question rajesh please please unmute Rajesh, please unmute your 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 audio is unmute. Sir, sir, please sir, unmute, sir. Rajesh. Rajesh, are you there? I am here, sir. Come on, 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 sir. Uh, things in this bone marrow, you know, things and uh, these MNCs and all those things. Uh, very, very important things, you know, uh, at the district levels and sub-district levels. I don't know how we are going to have all these things. Uh, as rightly told by Dr. Manish, there, there, there may be trials going on the big institutes, but we have to reach to the grassroots also. 
how is that possible dr manish sir actually uh, the since uh, i think i have missed that talk in india practicing regenerative orthopedic is not illegal there is no law so as of now the thing which we can do is is the minimal manipulation minimal manipulation means you can go for a avian head of femur you can do your core decompression in the ot at the same time you can call a centrifuge you can get a bmac done and you can use that bmac at the same sitting with taking lot of good consent proper consent also with the helensky declaration which is a very uh, proven method of a consent that if there is no treatment you can go for it and then it works very well actually but the problem is if you are charging a hefty amount for msc is charging a lot for this thing that is a challenge which is uh, giving a bad name so it is not illegal there is no law but it is again a uh, trial which is to be done but the trial required a uh, permission from apex uh, national St stem cell apex committee which has given permission to lot of center as been mentioned by dr madan also pj chandigarh is doing lot of institutes are doing but at a grassroots level as a orthopedic surgeon we can see lot of these cases some, uh, for example critical ischemia there are lot of cases of critical ischemia which comes to the opd if we can go for a ct angiography and find out what is the problem and we can inject prp or bmac around we are gif giving a gift to them uh, doing a lot of help in the favor and it is not a problem the only problem comes when the medical legal issues come or when the consumer forum the patient goes and all most of the time it is because of the charges if we are going to charge heavily then we are going to, to do lot of problems so otherwise it is it can be done to some extent so but still can be done, no something can be done definitely definitely that has been done it is it is a good boon for a lot of cases actually yes i you. think i think the main advantage is that now the many companies they are they are roaming around with their set and it is not at all costly because within more by very uh, within the ot itself you can prepare that that is the thing that we don't have to keep all this thing in your ot the, if you order the company the company guide will guy will come with yeah. all the instruments and they will make it sterile it is a very uh, small sir, affair not not a big deal and sir the documentation is very important thing which is being uh, missing for osteoarthritis to document is really very difficult but for a uh, for a prp for a non union for a avn for a critical ischemia documentation is easy and when the documentation is there pre and post nobody can do anything and if you are using a minimal manipulation so only the case selection is very important it's not uh, it, should, it can be uh, bread and butter for everybody manish uh, for the benefit of all can you tell about this spinal cord regeneration because uh, some attempt has been done at two, two three places in the country and so, they have uh, claimed spinal... the quadruplexes so uh, it is not working very well the challenge is actually whenever the spinal cord injury is there do we get a spinal cord injury patient immediately within 3 4 days when the fibrosis is not been there where definitely if there is not a gap it is simply exanthematous where little bit injury is there and at that particular time bmac can be placed it reach to the point and there the the growth factors will stimulate the endogenous stem cell but we don't get those cases what we get a case of a paraplegia a quadriplegia cervical cord injury which has been old which has been fixed by a surgeon and the response is not, uh, uh, the response is not there they are not the right cases to be attempted because a lot of defame is already been there in a country for this reason and it should not be attempted because whenever we are placing it uh, on epidural those stem cell loading it there it is not reaching to the side because there is a lot of fibrous tissue so again a revision surgery to be done and then it can be placed but again after 2 years when already a paraplegia or quadriplegia is there and already the uh, degeneration is been there it is of no use truly speaking that is why it is not the thing to be rewarded actually but still being done so that is uh, the world that the people do it i appreciate dr manish this his this words as i was telling unfortunately i got a younger son as rajesh no he is a lot of uh, the friends know who is around uh, 22 years old um, now he is 26 at his age of 16 he had a viral meningeal colitis and he got quadriplegic and he was in um, bagayam with suranjan scare um, in neuro rehab in um, cmc velour so at that time what i was going to send 
I interacted with Suranjan, I Birsha, Birsha Madhuri, and tried to find out if anything can be done for him with stem cells uh, locally or centrally because it was a viral management capillitis. And as just now Manish said, they said it's a regeneration which we are looking for, but there is a degeneration in NAP cell which is much more faster and this regeneration is very slow, as we all know. So that's really, they said, doesn't work well. Even later on, I tried to find out some of the UK literatures also. There is everything is in the trial phase. But what Manish said in his first lecture, the brain chip, that may be uh, something which may be something in dictating terms where your lower and upper motor neuron pathways are okay, but where the higher center is not working, there if you can work with your stem cell, that may work on. And I know I'm not a man to speak all those things, but it's my pain and my personal life experience what I got this information I'm sharing with you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, Professor Jha, sir. Right. Uh, I think, well, I think, I was... I think... I was very happy. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Okay. So when your rheumatoid patient uh, made her statement that she has improved, I was so happy to see that. Uh, I was uh, looking into some of the literatures and then I have come to know that it is more of value in autoimmune diseases especially in multiple scler sclerosis and SLE. So lupus and multiple sclerosis are two situations. Not that it does not work in rheumatoid, but comparatively, the biologics give better results in rheumatoid and spondyloarthropathy. So that may be a little cheaper to use than these ones. True, true. Very true, sir. You exactly. also talked about two things, and I was reminded of Professor Salen Bhattacharya from Calcutta. In his all osteoarthritis patients, to the best of my knowledge, he will ask for B interaction, maybe even for a few hours in the morning and evening. So you have rightly overemphasized that traction or distraction has some regenerative effect on the articular cartilage. You also talked about evidence best that uh, brisk walking also helps regenerate because the MSCs are stimulated. And the one, one uh, inquiry I would like to have from you is regarding fat cells. What I have come to know, maybe I am wrong, that osteoprogenitor cells or MSCs are more number unit-wise in the fat cells as compared to the bone marrow cells. And people at many centers are using lipogems for regeneration, even in osteoarthritis. Why this has not become very popular in India, if you can throw some light? So the reason for this is what we are saying is MSCs from the fat, as you have already well pointed out, fat has more MSCs as compared to bone marrow. And some centers are into it. They are uh, doing the fat processes and taking out MSC are using it. Now, it is not so popular. The reason is the cost and the reason is the legal issues because MSCs, like for example, in uh, any case, whenever you are using a MSC uh, for osteoarthritis, MSC for any reason, for even a cerebral palsy. So these MSCs should be at least 50, 40 to 50 millions in that particular case, which has been required for a single dose. And if uh, you want to buy these MSCs, they are uh, available at 1,000 rupees per, uh, uh, per million. So that will be 50,000 rupees MSCs for this particular condition. Now these MSCs can be taken out from fat, which can be which has been used, or they can be taken out from uh, cord cord derived MSCs from different banks, which can be of use. 
but as you have rightly said then uh, these ra cases like we are seeing a lot of ra cases and in last 15 20 year on three or cases are required to go for a uh, stem cell why because that patient was having a diabetes that was patient was having a thyroid that was patient was having a rheumatoid and all the three get corrected by this thing because to kill three stones with one one bird yeah. and the patient was a uh, li little bit with the biological therapy it's not a very rewarding because sir you know very well that even after biological the remission is very not very much sure but with our uh, with the stem cell the remission can come to it come into play so because of these things because of the legal issues that msc is not being allowed it is not a minimal manipulation it has not been openly done but still been done so that that's the thing actually right and different issues okay. what dr madan you want to comment something please on this course there are a lot of material uh, in a uh, 100 ml of adipose tissue you can derive lot of uh, products of msc like nano fat micro fat svf microvascular fragments all these things and exosomes even secretomes lot many regenerative material you can get but it all depends on what kind of uh, preparatory method are we using the second one as jasar has told like lipogems we have lot many companies have come out with lot many gems tubes all these things but all these things are to the cost for the patient each and every apparatus will cost almost 1.25 lakhs T lamb has come out with one kit. It has eight chambers. If you have to process 100 ml of adipose, you have to cross on with the eight chambers. So almost it is it is coming up to 1.2 lakhs for one dose of SVF injection, which is derived from adipose tissue. So only cost factor limits the usage of adipose tissue. Yeah, right. In that case, we can go for BMAC, which is very easy and it is less cost effective for the patient as well. So it is always sir, better whenever there is no option like avian grade one to no option critical ischemia no option delayed union going to non-union no option only in those cases we can use minimal manipulation rest thing is again it's very plus and minus so that right practice is very important which indian stem cell study group is trying to propagate with a good uh, uh, um, thing in the mind that you should have a publication on this. We, we always publish paper. Publication is not a big issue. All the good international journal accept our publication. And that is a proof that it works very well uh, under any legal issues. So only where we can prove it, we should do it. With the, of course, a cost is involved because with the BMAC, with the PRP, with the AVM, no cost has been involved. It is a saving procedure. It's a bone saving, joint saving procedure. But AVM at the stage of grade three and four, no way. Go for a replacement. Sir, one more question they have asked. How can we assess the quality of BMAC in routine practice? Uh, so, Manish, yeah, 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 you, you, you answer, Madan. <laughs> no, sir, you answer, please. You go ahead, sir. So, so, so it is simply uh, very good. Uh, actually, uh, whenever we take out a BMAC, ideally with a, uh, with a uh, cell counter, its uh, concentration should be checked. And again, for checking uh, the blast cell count, the MSC count, you have to go for a specific labs, which are there like big, big labs who they check it. But again, it is a cost taking process. They take 15, 30, 14,000 rupees for checking it and that's some, some way out. But definitely your cell counts should be checked uh, by uh, this uh, cell counters and then it should be used, but need to document the blast cell. But I will again say BMAC, is to be used for avian, for uh, delayed union, for uh, you know all these conditions where the aim is to stimulate the endogenous progenitor cell, not to transfer these MSCs because in in a in a uh, five ten ml of a BMAC you will be having a very few 0 0.10, 0 0.01 percent of MSC. We are not interested in MSC, which is a right treatment for autoimmune disease, as been mentioned by Dr. Cha also, for uh, many conditions which are not our cup of tea. Our orthopedic cup of tea is vascularogenesis, neurogenesis, that where we can do a BMAC. But definitely, uh, cell counters, you can uh, have a good uh, percentage of it. Yes, Dr. Madan, please add on something more on this. Last year, we, uh, from Indian Stem Cell Study Group, we have come out with one publication on how to assess the quality of BMAC, how to retrieve the quality BMAC, I mean bone marrow from the uh, iliac crest. So there is a publication, I will share it across also. Yeah, that publication will tell you how to go about 
last year we have done a small workup along with our uh, fellows in indian stem cell study group which i'll share shortly dr uh, mandan there, there is a question there is a question from dr romans that he is prp is uh, on osteoarthritis how successful it is are it, it, anybody in, in our group is using prp i do, i think we are not in favor of using the prp for the osteoarthritis so so dr mandan is uh, giving a good smile see i'll again say prp is a cocktail of growth factor it is simply stimulating your uh, endogenous cell which you can stimulate by brisk walking if it is a grade 1 or 2 osteoarthritis it is not a choice for grade 3 and 4 and please explain the patient while giving the prp if you are giving that it is a temporary procedure it is simply a dipomedrol which is without any side effect but the growth factors which are there are wonderful they can reawaken your uh, endogenous progenitor cells which are there but for what long for one month or two months then you are back to the number one square so you have to work up what is the cause for a oa whether it is a oa whether it is a rheumatoid whether it is cppd disease and whether you can go for other measures also only then it is used it is a area where we can burn the fingers so please that is the easiest part for any orthobalgic person to use a prp in any knee because the knees are so many coming in the opd but please don't use it if you use it only for a temporary measure rest the thing has to be taken care of msc is the right choice for osteoarthritis but it is not legally allowed so i think i think we had a great discussion uh, how we come uh, like two hours was like a match the very quickly we passed around two hours and there's a great audience all throughout the country i think uh, now man uh, uh, i i request our junior friend dr parthu sarkar to have the, uh, from some comment from his side thank you sir this is the beginning of a new era sir this is the thing that the gray zone that we have focused and thank you for organizing such a wonderful topic but to mention that this is the beginning we will organize regularly i think this is with the permission of our president and secretaries so that we can organize such a thing that can be organized in a way that we can have a discussion that will be fruitful for our orthopedic practice because this is the zone that has never been covered by anybody so this is the time for this southeast asia as well as india so that we can organize this type of program so that we can be able to treat the most of the orthopedic patient i think we have a great patient on this rheumatoid disease so i thank at the outset i express my hearty hearty gratitude to the stem cell study group and our founder president dr s s jha and our founder secretary general professor monish khanna sir president dr shantanu lakar and all the stalwarts including our secretary general dr professor chinmoy das who is instrumental in setting this program and i i humbly extend my vote of thanks to dr rajesh gupta professor anand kishor pal sir dr a n mukherjee dr alok si agarwal dr sanjay keskar dr k p jaiswal dr madan dr ramaswara gupta and last but not the least our honorable immediate past president dr D professor dilip majumdar sir and all other including the people behind the screen like our mentor dr sarnandu samanto dr anup agarwal dr pankaj jindal dr and others without them it is impossible to hold and it would be the proper to say that after the great international conference of iracon at kolkata this module has brought us together again for a great cause and concept the blazing inspira inspiration has brought about more than 100 young and senior orthopedic surgeons uh, old and many more getting to develop with the enthusiasm it may be a thousand pan india combo registration drive soon 
It's very positive to note that all the academic activities have got suitable and sound direction from our new Secretary General of Iora, Dr. Chinmay Das, and would surely bring more colors and cheers tomorrow. I wish all safe and good health. Thank you. Again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, with a folded hand, I will request everybody who are not member of Indian Orthopedic Rheumatology Association be a member so that you will be regularly in touch with all the activities of the association. Thank you so much. Game. Thank, Thank you, Manish, for inviting me. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Anu. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, sir. Thank you. Good night. All of you are happy. I think as a protocol, we okay. should sing the national anthem before closing it. So, uh, True. so yeah, please, yeah. please let us stand up and sing our national anthem. Jai Hind, Bande Mataram. Any announcement, Professor Jha? Oh, yes. Announcement is that the show must go on. And yeah. maybe we are we are very soon going to announce another program and we will all be there. Uh, Dr. Sornandu, are you there or you have already left? Uh, he is there. Sir. Okay. He is there, uh, sir. He is there. Okay. So uh, we all wish him good luck in his mission as well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You, thank, you. Right. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Greeting, uh, yeah. Greetings from Varanasi. Thank you. Right. Jai Swar. We will keep it going. We will keep it going. Uh, we will we'll, uh, keep it going. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Varanasi. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, on, I'm from Patna.